Hello and welcome to the Rock and Roll to Success. Today I have the honor of bringing the best, the greatest up and coming Brazilian artist since, I don't know, maybe Cazuza, maybe Vinicius de Moraes, Waldorf. What's up, my man? So glad to have you here. Wow, that's a great introduction. And I wish. Um, it's, a, it's an honor to, to be here. And I'm so excited wow. to have this conversation with you and with, with your audience. Oh, the pleasure is mine, man. So before we start, like, would you like to talk a little bit about your book that's coming up? So um, I'm working on a book. It's been years, a lot of years, but writing in the past two years, um, but in the past, the past month, it, um, things became very fast and I started to finish actually the book and it's going to be ready this week, like the, 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 the last edition to present to investors and editors and publishing companies and to all the people who I hope will help to bring this vision to life, but it's coming and it's, it call, it's called Lost in Paradise and it's the first book from a trilogy that it's called um, Promised Land, Promised Land. In this book, I talk about my own journey growing up in an environment that for decades I felt that I was lost. I knew that I was living in in an incredible paradise, but I felt lost during the entire process. And I hope with, with through my journey, uh, a lot of people can relate and I bring a lot of things to light for people to be inspired by. Oh, I definitely think that you will because for everything that you've told me already of the book and your vision for the trilogy, it seems like many people will resonate with it. And would you like to talk a little bit more of how it was growing up in paradise? And when did you actually notice that you were living in a form of paradise? Yeah, um, it's interesting because actually a lot of writers already said what I'm going to say. And I don't remember exactly the one who said that, but for you to to go to heaven, you need to go through hell, right? And since I was born, and I had since I have memories of my life, it was always difficult. It was always tough, and I always felt lost. I, I never knew who could answer the questions that I have about everything. But besides all of that, when I, I was looking outside in the country that, that we live in, in Brazil, I was always embraced by nature and by life itself. So for some reason, even living in chaos always felt like paradise in some kind of way. It was just like, um, I have a lot of things to figure out, but I knew that I was living in a, in a paradise. Um, it was a process and it still is. Now I'm in the process of maintaining uh, the paradise and make the paradise look and be filled for people even more like paradise, you know? But it's nice to be in heaven, finally. And I think I'd like to pick up on some threads that you opened there. Uh, first of all, we can go to it later because I see that you post a lot about your hometown and things that you would like to change in your hometown or things. Sometimes you make some comparisons. Like I saw some videos or some stories of yours in Sao Paulo and comparing to things that you know, we could do something similar in our town, but we don't do it, and I wish we did. And yeah. I see that you kind of are delving more into this um, public figure kind of role for your hometown, like trying to be more of a leader towards yes. your community, your original community. But at, the, but at the same time, another thing that I thought about asking you was about 
how sometimes heaven and hell may live inside of us because it, it is a process internal to us. So, yeah. yeah, man, I think you can pick any one of those that you want the most. Like Exactly. I actually, on my book, in the first pages, one of, one of the first chapters, I wrote about that, actually. Like heaven and hell uh, is inside of us and our minds works like a radio station you plug in the tune that you want to hear but to you understand those frequencies for a few people it takes a lot of time you know and i'm and i'm writing about that in a very simple way because i want to that my book uh, reaches the most uh, the common people actually i want to people in my hometown read my book and i know people there doesn't read at all i want every age to read my book um because i've dealt i i've i deal with so much trauma in life and was difficult growing up and i know that is a reality for major people in brazil that makes our minds kind of have difficulties to focus in reading for an example mm -hmm. and that's why I want to that my book be very talk about deeper things, but in a very simple way for everyone to understand and connect with that. Because if a simple person from my hometown understand the concept that our minds works like a radio station, they all know how a, a radio works. They still listen to radio on my hometown, you know. Um, And I think those things can really change your subconscious perspective, perspective of things. And you mentioned something about me uh, want to represent my hometown, my community, and you are completely right because um, I don't want um, exactly do that in a public way because as an artist, I really want that people talk about the things that I create. I don't mm -hmm. want to talk about like, I go to my hometown, I see all the problems there. I don't want to make tweets about, posts about that, you know? I want to solve those problems in private. And that's a lot of uh, of problems to solve, but um, it's, a, it's a calling because when I go there, they come to me to talk to me about what the city as a whole is going through because they see myself um, because uh, because I left uh, and I succeed in some kind of way and they see myself as, as this man who made it mm -hmm. and I think and I think that's super cute and sweet um, and I listen to them and I want to to help and solve because it's actually basic things to solve you know yes it is and Yeah, that's so cool that they they act like this towards you. And, and I think they're right because you really did go to the big city and you succeeded there. And of course, we can go on with that story. Like you can tell everything about it if you want to later on as well. Like why did you decide to go and how you went there, how it was and all the ups and downs? Because I know it's hard going from a small town to super biggest metropolis in the southern hemisphere and i i bet yes. that you have a ton of uh stories on that that's why i'm writing so many books because it's a lot of things to say man and it's gonna be so nice now that i divided the first book also in three paid parts because it's a lot of stars to tell in different subjects even though it's uh, only one story on the first that i will release it's about um my hometown family brazilian family and how we go through things it's a book for parents and for for sons as well for us to understand why we have so much problems um building and raising families and children and but besides that I will also write about all this journey 
that I went through because although I am I very adaptive in every place that I live like I transform myself to to live in every place that I that I go but it is a very different culture and I'm just seeing that now that I'm watching my life from a outside perspective um in Sao Paulo, for me to be the real me, the hometown me, it's almost like there's no place for people like that. You really need to act. You really need to adapt. Otherwise, you are nobody. And people actually are not talking about that in the culture anymore. And that's something that I want to bring. You know, music is very important to me. You're going to ask a little things about favorite bands and things like that. And music, Brazilian music used to, you mentioned Cazuza. Cazuza is one of the music or artists. And I think musicians, they are the most powerful people in the culture because they can, when people get messages through music, it's way more impactful, to be honest, even through at least for me, more impactful to listen to a song than to read a book. We used to have artists in Brazil that they express the difference of the culture in such a deeper level. Sertanejo music or folkloric music used to tell the history of the man of the countryside, you know, the man who works in the field, who works in the farms and things like that. And they don't do that anymore. That's a people who actually does, but they don't have platforms. Basically, mm -hmm. main culture doesn't talk about the problems that real people from Brazil go through. Um, for example, you left a small city and go to a big city. Um, it, that's a lot of things to, to talk about that. Uh, mainstream culture is not talking anymore and I want to bring those subjects to the table again because we have conversations in Brazil like if we were this um, first world country talking about those big subjects when if you look close that's a lot of things of real life that we are not talking about you know and I I need to tell those things, so I will. Yeah, I, I, I completely get what you mean, especially because you're involved with the circles like of artists and that kind of circle, the music industry. So, of course, you know 1,000 times better than me the things that they say and the things that... And I totally agree with you. There are so many problems that are much more fundamental and the people suffer, the real people in the small towns and in the peripheries of the big cities, they're suffering with those real life, very, very like physical yes. kind of problems. And people are thinking about things that, okay, they might be important, but not that important when you're like, you're hungry, you don't know if you're going to have dinner or something. Like there are deeper things I think that could be discussed and you're completely right, man. Yeah. Um, and working in entertainment and mainly in music business, and I actually wrote about this today on X, I didn't left, you know, this scenario. I just gave a step back to work on myself, to build my own things, to come back stronger in the entertainment as a whole, because mm -hmm. I noticed working in 10 years with public figures, with businessmen, with CEOs, that nobody would talk things like it needs to be said. Because, um, because I wasn't a public figure, how I say that, I was not a, neither a public, a, neither a public, a public figure, neither a powerful, a powerful, mm -hmm entrepreneur, a power CEO. So I always said 
everything that I'm saying here, I always said through this entire time, but I was one of the few voices talking about this. So every time I was shut down, and it became a time that I said, I came through all this journey. I left that freaking small city to this freaking big city, not to play dolls. I, I came here to work in entertainment because I know what entertainment can change in people's lives. You know, entertainment and art changed my life when I, I lived in a small town. It brings more perspective of the world, right? I used to put posters in on my living room of people who always talked about a bigger world, a bigger vi vision. And that became my profession, my profession. And when I start working for 10 years, man, with big corporations, I said, what the hell happened? That's not what I was signing to, you know? And I tried, I tried all the chains possible but it was i was wasting time and i need to build something bigger and stronger to come back and change things more effectively so the vision now is to be able to be heard and like show the masses the things that you believe are the most important or what is your vision right now with this yeah um mass communication is super important to me because um i don't feel even though sometimes I see myself alone in entertainment industry and in culture in general, I know that the things that I think, the things that I write and the things that I want to talk represent so much people that are also without any voice. So mm -hmm. uh, I want to bring that voice and, and to be that person on any tables that when people start to get delusional, I say, come here, that is actually those things that we need to talk about, you know? There are people in, in Brazil, there are teenagers, there are children who are raising and they need to be inspired by, about bigger things um, and we need to bring to them more perspective. But in, at the same time, we need to show all the things in our culture that needs to get better, you know? Um, because today, what I see, um, I think Sao Paulo, uh, all the entertainment and all the communication born from the minds who live here. A little bit in Rio de Janeiro, but the biggest minds who are um, taking care of culture lives in Sao Paulo. When you live in Sao Paulo for such a big time, you completely lost sense of the real life. Like, and I feel very lucky because when I go to small towns, I see in, inside of everyone, in common people, a desire for change. They don't feel represented about the, the, the current culture. They don't feel at all. And sometimes I get super emotional talking to them because they want so much to change things, but they feel completely powerless because nobody represents the things they believe in. Nobody talk about their mothers, their grandfathers, they, the stories that they, they, they growing up seeing and for an example, I'll give you a specific an example. Um, I guess that my main community to talk directly in entertainment, it will be the LGBTQ community because I'm part of them. But when I look to my community and I look to everything that is going on in the world, I see they completely lost reality as well <laughs> because a gay people can have children okay um you know a gay couple can't have biological children for an example when you you don't have the goal 
to have a biological children because you can't. Of course, you, you want to adopt, but it's never a priority. Mm -hmm. Your vision of family is a little bit different. Um, they don't, if they don't get that as a priority, they will lose um, the sense on, on how build a family and how raise a children and how bring children to the world is important, more important than what we actually represent as an individuals, individuals or even as a group. So I really want to be that voice inside this community and to remember them. That family is actually important because we grow up in um, families, kind of dysfunctional families. Mm -hmm. Most of us, most of Brazilians, to yeah, be honest most of, with you, yeah. most of Brazilians is, is around the world, it's a problem, it's a world problem. Dysfunctional families. Because we grow up in dysfunctional families, we start to believe that family is a dysfunctional thing by nature, and we start to promote things that can make families even worse, you know? And at the end of the day, it's all about healing ourselves, healing our families. And because if we lose sense of family, we lose sense of community. And if we lose sense of community, we lose sense of a country. It's, it's impossible to have a nation and to perceive it as a nation if they don't care or they don't talk about family, you know? Yes, definitely. I think it's very easy to get a bit nihilistic about things and lose hope when we think of these things. And like you said also, we need to do this kind of self-healing of going back to those things that hurt us and trying to figure those things out because when you change yourself, you change the world. If everyone did yes. this, the world would be a much better place. Yes. And you, you said the right word. You said um, the progressive communities, which I still see myself as a progressive man, but I always, I was watching an interview and the, the woman said, um, one day progressives um, is left one day people um, went to sleep feeling progressive and they wake up feeling conservative. Mm -hmm. And I have this duality in my mind right now because when I look to the culture that I want to help, they will see me as a super conservative person and I actually doesn't care. And I think that's important because um, we need to conserve things that are good for society. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned nihilism, the progressive culture at this moment are completely nihilistic. If we follow everything that the progressive minds are telling us right now, the world will end in a few decades, you know? And I see so much of my community um, talking about the trauma that they went through and they, get, they don't understand they get, that they got stuck in traumas. And when we celebrate so much pride, sometimes they don't understand that they talk about a, a trauma perspective, not from a pride perspective. And they misunderstand, they misunderstanding a lot of things. And I really want to be the antagonist on that scene because that's what I, I will be. And I'm, I'm all here for that with my shades, with my black clothes, let's do it. Yeah, I think it serves you very well, man. I think you look yeah, good I... in, in black and you don't, you're not afraid of being the anti-hero or the guy that love... says the things that no one wants to hear. And I think it's very brave of you as well. And it's, I think that's one of the things that makes people resonate with you because we see that you really don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> you're going to say whatever you have to say and you're not afraid. I think this is an important thing. Today, many people are afraid of even thinking certain things. And when you do that, you can't be creative if you're not willing to make a mistake or think something that 
oh my God, you can't think that, you can't say that. If you want to be a creative, you need to allow everything to flow. And then after you put it on paper, then you see, okay, this is good, this is bad. Yeah. But you need to let it out. Exactly. Um, you are completely right. But when it comes to a business perspective, in Brazil, mm -hmm. a lot of things are changing in the world. That's why when I step down from Brazilian industry, you are drinking Red Bull, uh, I was drinking one as well. Anyways, um, I hope they pay I, us for the merchant. Oh, I, I hope as well. <laughs> when I left uh, the industry in Brazil, I started to go after people from outside the country for help in business, in a business aspect, because um, I really believe there are people out there and I'm seeing them day right now that they really care about the big picture of things. But when it comes to Brazil, the type of career that I will launch and I've been trying for the past two years to bring people to the table, investors and companies and team, because I want a big thing. I don't want to start smaller because I, can't, I don't have time to waste. It's a lot of things to change in the culture. But the things that we are talking here right now, nobody was, it was um, nobody wanted to listen when it comes to the, the business environment in entertainment in Brazil. The, enter, the entertainment in Brazil, look, I don't know at each and every one person from the entertainment of Brazil, but I work with the major ones, okay? I didn't find any place that saw my vision and understood it. They saw everything as a crazy thought. They thought that I was, that I was just a dreamer and they thought that I was too problematic because I want to talk about, you know, the history of a family, I want to bring different perspectives because in our scenario right now, it's like, it's monotonous. You only are invited to work, to participate in the conversation if you agree with what everyone is saying. And that's super boring, you know? That's boring for, for uh, creatives, that's, death you know yeah it's totally 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 agree with you and yeah i i think that the creative industry in brazil will try to censor this episode because we're poking you know th into things that they wouldn't want us to talk about but maybe we well what do you want we to can say? put on x actually you need to you need to put your podcast on x as well you need to release uh the episodes there as well you think people would watch on x people are watching way more things on x than on youtube like, like long videos yeah the the biggest people from who are doing podcasts they are they are putting on x as well yeah so let's do this then let's launch yes. this one on x this will be the first yes. one that i put on x as well but I was going to ask you, going back to the beginning of like what you were obsessed with as a kid and how that yes. inspired you to become an artist and then to go through the path that you've gone in your life. So what were you obsessed with when you were a kid? Yeah, I really realized that I was born with a mission because throwing, uh, throwing back even through my book, my life, it was always about art and paradise. And paradise to me, it's nature. Like it's, nature is the ultimate expression of the paradise in the physical realm. When I was a kid, I always uh, want to go to, actually I'm writing a lot about this in the book, and it's quite fun, um, like very small kid, walking into the woods of these mountain towns, like go deeper into the, the nature places, playing 
in the in nature environment and when i was not doing that i was trying to do any type of art but i was actually very censored even by my family i started to young very young to design i loved to design clothes i really loved to design clothes when i was a child and i actually went to college later in fashion college but i didn't finish and so i love design but i have to stop because my family saw that as a homosexual thing and they mm. shut me down then i started to dance i love to dance man I dance my ass off until today. I love to dance. They shut me down. You can dance. You can you can design. You can dance. Then I start to sing, um, but I was not that good on singing. And they and they actually didn't care about the singing. So I continued to sing. And when I became uh, a teenager, I went going through. I went through a lot. And I shut down all the things that I love. Nature, I stopped to go to nature because I became very depressed. Um, all the things that I love, I had to shut down because of my father and my family. And I changed my perspective from for the outside world. And it, it's why it's when I started to consume other artists. And they, they started to inspire me. And I didn't mention the writing. Um, I also wrote since I was a child and I never stopped. Um, I wrote in diaries and I wrote through my entire life actually. But I was yeah. always about creativity, always about other types of creation. I think everyone, if we allowed it, allowed us to we have all the talent inside of us. You just need to pick and work on that and um, perfect the craft that you want. But it's always, everything is inside of us. So I, that's why I want to do it all. I will write, I will dance. I, if, I, if I had the money I went to, I, I will will to a studio recording some things to see how it will sound, you know? And we need to experiment in life. And do you think that anyone can be an artist? I think, I think yes. But come an artist as a profession, is a profession, you need to work on our craft. Um, I think in the past 10 years, because of social media, um, the creative aspect of each and everyone came to life, which is incredible. Like it's amazing that everyone feels creative and put the creativity outside. But everything has a side effect. Because of that, a lot of people who was not able to work on their craft, to think about their message, for what they were doing, what they were doing, the culture became a, a little tipsy. Uh, but I, I do think that everyone born an artist. And if you go very deep, Everything that we do, it's a, uh, it's art, engineering, it's art, you know, everything can be an art form. It's because we focus more on the liberal arts, but mm -hmm. the truth is that everything that we create is artistic. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful take and something that we should think of more as a society that there are not that things are art per se, but think about like treat what you're doing like if it was a work of art. Yes, so, yes. I'm going completely. to build something. I want it to be a work of art. It's like yes. it's the expression of my soul and the tell physical that to, realm. Tell that to the to the architects of the moment, because one of the things that I I think it's being more sad about brazil but in the whole country it's architecture man it's sad to look at the buildings that people are building it's so boring it's all the same all you the know, same have you seen that meme that's like a bunch of buildings and then it's like uh london tokyo rio de janeiro and it's like the same building <laughs> yes i already seen a lot of those of those memes 
it's super sad and it's um it all came comes to the something that we are uh, we are also working on i guess there is a lot of people working on that in the world fixing um education in all levels because the universities focus so much on put people ready for the the market that they forgot to i don't know man that's a lot of people um studying architecture and it that's not showing up in the um, at least in the in the neighborhoods that i'm i'm walking in yeah and i think a, a big part of it is that people end up thinking about things only for the money so you yes. have a lot of restraints when you're doing a big building for example and you want to have it the most cost effective way possible so that you have the greatest uh, square meters to sell to people and you don't want it to be too expensive to build and and then people kind of lost their creativity they just yeah. make those because when you put buildings. when you put um i think actually i think it's it's possible to do both it's possible to um build things fast and we actually um i actually published that you know the entire estate was built in 14 months it's possible to build things fast to raise money to gain money and also be creative but i think in the pressure um and it's it's, it's something i i guess it's also about leadership because the leaders of any project of course they have they need they need and they have to gain money it needs to be faster faster as it as it possible but they also need to ask for excellence it's not impossible to build a beautiful building be creative and be effective not that much expensive but be something that is more creative You know, I'm not an architect, but I, it's possible. I know it is because a lot of people already done that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it comes a lot to do with leadership. And there was this age in which people were, there were bolder leaders and there were people that wanted, it was kind of a pissing contest to be fair. Like the big guys in, The United States, for instance, you had the Chrysler building and then the other guy wanted to do a taller building. So he wanted to build it as fast as possible. So having these rivalries or, you know, the person that's envisioning something, he wants to leave a legacy so that 100 years from now, 200 years from now, they'll say, oh, it was this guy that envisioned this. Like, for instance, in Barcelona, they have the Sagrada Familia, that's this amazing Beautiful. church that it's Beautiful. still not complete you're still it's not building complete. it it's still it's not, not. i think it, it's almost but it's still not like more than a hundred years to make it wow and everyone talks about gaudi and i think that people kind of forgot about this like they're just thinking short term yeah and i used to blame a lot of modernity when it comes to better texture But I was very wrong because I, I had the lucky to went to Dubai and Dubai, it's everything about modernity. And we talk about a lot about Burj Khalifa, which is amazing, but that is a building there. I don't know if you already saw it. The frame is a building um, that is actually a frame. It's a, it calls the frame and it's bizarre of beauty. Ah, yeah, I saw it. It's so Oh my God, for me, that's the most beautiful building of Dubai because uh, I went inside both of them, the the frame and the, the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa is beautiful, but it's something about that building that moves. That building moves. Um, and it's a lot of, it's hot inside there, very hot and it moves and I don't know, you, you kind of start to feel dizzy, but the frame, it's perfection. Like the, when you walk um, up there, 
the the ground is transparent it's it's super it's super freaking dope oh my god that's possible to build things that looks modern but it's just dope man oh my god that building i will not forget yeah you know i think you brought a great point that in places in asia especially people are still doing these things that we're talking about, these great architectural things or trying to be different or trying to build taller buildings or whatever it is, they're, they are innovating more. And here on our side of the world, more Western world kind of views, and, but you know, like we're not like developed world, but we kind of try to get some of those ideas as well here in Brazil. And I think in many ways, architecture isn't bold enough over here yes as i as i mentioned for example when it comes to art music to me is the most effective tool to help people on a massive scale okay architecture to me is the most effective art to help people see beauty in the in the urban life here in brazil i think i can um i can be talking um, bullshit but i don't see that we have like brazilian architecture type i don't i don't i don't know if you have an architect uh, an architecture type that it's exclusively ex exclusively brazilian and I, when I think about that, I think that it's sad because, um, man, for an example, Babylon used to have the gardens of Babylon, right? Brazil is everything about nature. It's everything about green. Um, it's everything about um, forest. I think to this point, some architect should have been created a type of architecture that is like exclusively Brazilian. Of course, we have Nehemiah, right? And it's beautiful architecture. But somehow, I think that not ex do not express completely the face of Brazilian in architecture. Yeah, I think... In the 20th century, there, there was a lot of modernist architecture here in Brazil, like Nehemiah and others, like you said. And before that, I think we were still too ingrained with the Portuguese architecture. So we still have some of Portuguese architecture in many it's beautiful. places. I, yeah, I think, it, I think it represents Brazil in a good way, actually. Um, and I think when I envision a Brazilian architecture in my mind, um, that DNA from the Portuguese uh, needs to be there in some kind of way because uh, when you see farms, when you see um, the old cities that we built, um, it's kind of Brazilian as well because mm -hmm. in Portugal it's different. Here it was more, it was smaller, it was um, more cozy, I don't know if I, it's able to say that, cozy, but it can be upgraded to become greater, you know? Um, um, maybe one day I will design an architecture that it's, it looks like Brazil to me, but I, I'm, I'm thinking about that a lot with How AI and it? all of that, because I love to use AI to build like ideas of architecture. How I would you see, see it? I see um, it needs to, I don't know, it's just because I'm a countryside guy, but it needs to be that um, farm aspect, you know? It needs to be stones. I need to be, I need to see uh, things built with stones again, I guess. I don't know, man. It's, 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 it's just ideas for architecture, architectures architects out there yeah you know a thing that you also see in other places sometimes is 
how they get old buildings that were kind of run down and they make it into something new, but using the old architecture, but inside it's super new. And I think that's also such a cool way to use those old buildings because otherwise they're just there and no one uses them and maybe a homeless guy yeah. there, but. And Brazil loves to do that. Brazil, Brazil loves to destroy old buildings in Sao Paulo we should have a beautiful downtown. Mm -hmm. there, there, that is still beautiful ar architectures there, but there's a lot of, of architect, architect, architecture and the downtown entirely is completely destroyed. It's ugly, it's not safe to go there. You want to understand how we, you know, when you want to walk to a place to understand the history of your country, sometimes I want to go to downtown and walk freely, like with taking pictures, just walk freely. I, 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 I won't because first, I do not feel completely safe. Second, it's super dirty, it smells bad, and I just, it's just not pleasurable to, to walk. But I still believe that it's possible to work that out if people that are in the leaders would like to do that but they they prefer to invest in ugliness <laughs> because ugliness make people blind yeah i totally agree with you the historic center of sao paulo is amazing and also not only sao paulo let's be real like pretty much every big brazilian city the, I don't know how Bahia is. Sucks. Yeah, Bahia, it seems to be, I never, I went to Bahia to work pretty fast. I, I didn't went to those places that is very far for you to visit in the, in the culture. Like Pelourinho. I don't know how Pelourinho, mm -hmm. it's beautiful, but I don't know if it's safe, it's dirty, I don't know. But it, it looks beautiful, but I don't know how is the daily basis of Pelourinho went place like that yeah Pelourinho does look amazing and i'm not sure as well but i think they might have made it a tourist spot because salvador has so many tourists and yes like in sao paulo you really wouldn't be too much of a touristic thing i guess like people usually go for business or to do something go to a show go to the doctor Man, or i will say this here because today i put my shade is on and I will say whatever comes to my mind, but um, that's why I'm talking so much with friends that we lost an opportunity when we put our royal family into exile and change our history completely because we were building the most powerful empire of America and to have an emperor one thing is for an example united states it was born um from uh with a, a republican aspect aspect they they left from the the royals and they became a republican a republic a republic a republic system and it worked very well brazil was built into um, a, an empire. It was the first project of Brazil. It's an empire and we work our asses off. A lot of people die for the empire to exist. And this huge country was built together through the hands of our emperors. What I was, what I am trying to say, the, uh, the image of an emperor, um, for in some some way, missing it's missing in this country because there's no leadership, that's no central um, place for people and even leaders to look up to. All the leaders always through the history look up to the the emperors, and they they were actually very democratic. I'm gonna be problematic here. It was not absolutist thing. We had the, the Congress, we have it all, but um, it lacks because our history was built for to look to somebody 
who was taking care of the picture and what the country will look like as a whole. And today we just doesn't we don't have and it is what it is. It looks what it looks, you know. And until we became so powerful that we change things through a um, private perspective, through a private way of changing things. But um, it's sad for me. It's very sad. Yeah, you know, I think it's all about the mainstream vision that we have from those times here in Brazil and how we're taught at school and through the media and everything. And also, I think a, a very big problem is looking at history from our lens today. So being anachronic yes. and thinking, Completely. oh, they, they did this. That was bad. Yeah, but everyone did that in that era it was another zeitgeist like of course there are things that you can't say were good <laughs> but anyways what i mean is that yeah i, I totally agree with you in, in terms of in my mind and in my artistic work i live in empire of brazil it still is an empire in my mind and everything that i will do in the country is thinking in the empire as um, everything that I want to build here is to the empire of Brazil. Yeah, and I think something that people don't realize is that actually Brazil ended up becoming the important part of the Portuguese empire. It literally was like the Imperio do Portugal, Brazil, e what was the, the islands? Uh, how was the name? It's the, the third one. I forgot, sorry. I'll, I'll see it. But anyways, they changed the capital. Algarves was the other one. So yes. they literally changed the capital. They came here and like the king lived here. It was the only European empire that had a capital outside of Europe in history. Yes. So they were really doing some nation building. And if you look at things like the railroads, they had a ton of railroads in 18, 1880, 1890. Nowadays, we pretty much don't have railroads anymore because they were like... Man, you understand how much we, lo we lose every day in culture because we do not value those things and we do not invest in even people who doesn't know the history of Brazil to come here and to walk through royal um, roads, you know? Um, I, I want so badly, it's because right now I, I am not able to, but to visit Petropolis, mm -hmm. um, you know, like Brazil, my beloved country, my beloved empire is full of lost opportunities. Oh my God, this country should be one of the biggest countries when it comes to tourism, not only Rio de Janeiro, not only Bahia everywhere our, tur our tourism is terrible it's terrible and i really want to change that through my career it, it may it may uh, um if somebody listen to that and think that is strange um i think when you are an artist you are able to bring attention to a lot of incredible places and aspects of the culture that brings people to look up and see for themselves. And I really want to do that um, on, my, uh, on my career. That's a lot of place in Brazil that people have no idea that exists. And we have everything here. We really have everything here, man. Literally we everything. Just, we just doesn't have infrastructure. Sometimes you go to incredible places and does it have a guard there? Does it have a place to drink water? Oh, there's a lot of opportunity <laughs> to improve then, I guess. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. That's as an entrepreneur, as a visionary, that's amazing because if there's opportunity, we just need to do. Yeah, exactly. And... That's exciting. That's super exciting. I feel so excited when I see those opportunities in Brazil. I see when I go to my hometown, for an example, we have that this beautiful road there that leads the city through an airport that it's abandoned. And this 
this road is super mystical. It's very beautiful. And I really want to build a cyclo-V into, mm -hmm. into the road to make not only people from the city to go there, but people, people from other small cities. That's a lot of things to build that can raise money for communities that can, be, can become very interesting uh, entrepreneurship. Even when, you, when I see small towns, when I see my small town, who have uh, 20,000 people, it's very small. It's very easy to handle 20,000 people. I'm sorry, I'm not a mayor, but I know it is because I already made shows for 40,000 people. It's very easy to handle 20,000 people. But what I'm trying to say is it is very easy and I have this desire inside of me to build a city that is a model it can become a model to the world. If you manage it, if you manage a small city with 20,000 people and create a beautiful place where people live happy with opportunities, the whole world will notice you because that's not a regular thing. Yeah, I think it's pretty much the opposite, actually. Nowadays, everyone lives in a way that they're not happy and there's there are reasons for that oh man sorry for taking this totally out of the direction but no, you talked I, about I, I making sorry no no of course not you can tell talk about whatever you want but you talked about organizing shows for 40,000 people and i think this kind of thing is so interesting so could you talk a little bit more about how you got into the entertainment industry and then yes. about some of these events and other things that you did that I think are super cool? Yeah, I, I will touch on, on a question that you you asked in the true text that was, what was the part of your career or something like that that you were most proud of, actually? And I can touch that through what you just ask because I was working, uh, I left my hometown city because there was not possibility to live there when I was younger, no jobs, not opportunities, chaos. And I went to Belo Horizonte, the biggest city from Minas Gerais. And I started to work in Belo Horizonte. Uh, I work in a few stores, but my main work there was in bars. I was a waiter and one of the first time that I felt alive, it was when I became a waiter. Oh my God, it was such a amazing work because there I started to have conversations with all types of people. It was super amazing. And then I started to promote um, events on the bar, on a nightclub, also, that was from the same owner, and I became this kind of well-known figure in the underground of Belo Horizonte, kind of. It was su super nice. I, I, I used to feel like a rock star. <laughs> I, I, I really felt like a rock star at that time. And I actually lived as if I were, it's a rock star, you know, sex, mm -hmm. drugs, and rock and roll and all of that. And it was nice. Uh, there a lot of experiences, a lot of inspirations, um, so many incredible people. But I lived that three years and I realized that it was nice for the moment, but I wanted bigger things. I want to work. I, I was already doing entertainment in the bar, in the nightclub, promoting parties and doing all of that. But uh, promote carnival on the street, like I put a thousand people on the streets of the bar. It was super dope, but I wanted more. And I started to make relations through that bar with journalists. But one day I was, I was so tired and was actually, I started to do the same thing that I did in the past two years. I started to look up to people but at that, at that time, people in Brazil that could give me opportunities. And I wrote to a lot of people saying, look, 
I don't have experiences on that field, but I do have knowledge and I can show to you that I can work in your company with your artists and I can really deliver. And I got a job in Sao Paulo to work in a huge magazine. It was Billboard um, on that time. And they say to me, look, we had a job for you. Can you came to, it was like a, a Wednesday and they say, can you came to Sao Paulo on the next Monday? And I said, of course. And I had, I hadn't like a penny in my pocket. And a, a friend helped me and I came and started to work here in the billboard. And it already was a big deal to me because I was having conversations with people from America, United States. And it was a magazine that was in the same um, publishing as Forbes. So we were working together, actually. I did a few works for Forbes as well. Um, but I, as everything, I look, I, I worked for that. I worked there in three, six months and they were paying me badly, very badly. That was, I was not even, most of I was like, it was very badly. And I was giving a lot of audience to them. Everything that I published, the site went down because I always, I always published the, the hot stuff. I, uh, I published things that nobody in the world knew. And even sometimes uh, the USA version of Billboard called to the CEO of the company in Brazil said, how this guy has this information? Because that, that information, it was something that we would give people in a exclusive way how your journalists have this information and actually the ceo from brazil um felt very happy uh, that i gave that information and it was never forget it was the hologram of michael jackson that it would mm -hmm. appear in a award show but it was it wasn't a nice place for me to work and i left and I connect with a business guy who worked for Vanessa Camargo. You probably know uh, Vanessa de Camargo. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing deal to me. And I was saying, okay, now things are getting real. Now I'm really jumping to the field that I always wanted to be. Big stars, big place, big game. It, this is, was 20, uh, 20, 2014, yes. And I started to work with Vanessa and we, we worked together for 10 years in the entertainment. I will always be thankful wow. to her because she opened a lot of doors to me, like a lot of places people, because she, she, she always felt that in her, on her career that people never took her seriously. Um, even inside of the industry, even she's, even though she's a very respecter, respectful public figure and have a lot of appeal, like the entire country know that girl. Yeah. And she opened a lot of doors to me. A lot of CEOs, a lot of people didn't want, want to listen what I had to bring to the table. And she always said, no, listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. And we became friends. I, through her, I grew up on my career. I start to work with UN. I also bring a lot of good opportunities to her with UN, with streaming services. And it was 10 years of huge experiences dealing with a list people in the business here. And when you say about events, um, when she released a Sertanejo record through a major company here in Brazil, we traveled to the entire country to do shows. And I helped um, the company promote her shows and I was her executive producer. So basically everything that was going on in her career, I need to supervise, I need to work on. So man, it was a lot of work. 
And it was incredible because I have so much, um, I learned when people give me an opportunity, I want to give my best. So when she gave me the opportunity to be like her, her hand in her career, and we face a lot together because entertainment, it's, it's not only not healthy for people like me, but also for people like her for women, super difficult. And we face a lot of things together, but it came at a time that for me was not working anymore because I was not going anywhere. So I wanted more again. And here we are. So to anyone listening to this, watching this, you should go back around five minutes ago and watch this again because this was such an inspiring story about how you went from the small town to the big town in your state, Belo Horizonte, and then you always have this, you, it's never enough, you always want something more, so you get to this stage, you're already successful, you could stop there, but then you want something else, and then you go to Billboard, that's such a famous magazine worldwide, and this is something I'll ask you later, like, how did you get that kind of info, like, what are your secrets, man? But then you go and you meet one of the most famous pop singers in Brazil and you work with her and become her executive producer. But that's still not enough after a while. Yeah. So I think that's very inspiring. Like you're always having a bigger goal, a bigger objective. After you've conquered something, you always want something else. And but in a healthy way, I hope, or at least it seems yes. by you telling it, it's in a healthy way. It's not something like that's bringing you down or anything. Yeah. Most of the times, like I, today I plan everything. Today I have a vision of the, of where I want to be, what I want to become. But I, um, until two years ago, when I gave a step back, left the music industry and the entertainment, I didn't have that vision fully on my mind. But every time that I wanted to go higher from my hometown to Belo Horizonte, from Belo Horizonte to Sao Paulo, and now from Sao Paulo to the freaking world, it was because I was feeling trapped creatively. I was not able to work. I was not able to create. I was felting that they were trying to kill me because they didn't let me when I say they, is the industry, is culture as a whole, okay? It was impossible to innovate. It was impossible to speak um, freely. It was impossible to challenge things. Working 10 years on this mindset, on a culture, national culture level, it makes, makes us feel sick because you look you you i it was a time that i was i went to a trip to vanessa with vanessa on chapada dos veadeiros uh, we took a week off and we say let's go travel because we need to get out of here she's such a nice person i love her and we went to chapada dos veadeiros only nature a paradise in brazil very few people there and there I started to put things in perspective and I, I was looking into my career and I say, well, if I came to the highest level in Brazilian culture and if, even on this level, I can't create, I can't innovate, what I'm going to do? I'm going to die because I'm a creative person, you know? And I, look, I work with every major company of Brazil, of entertainment, that you can mention. We're not going to mention them here because it doesn't need to. But I work with every major corporation here. And I try with them all. And I understand on that trip that it was never about make people happier. It was never about make culture richer. It was never about music. And I say, you know what? I'm, I was not 
getting a lot of money, but I was able to pay for my rent, pay for my food, travel a little bit, you know, in inside Brazil. But I say, look, I don't want that. I don't want that. If I if I came from my freaking hometown, I can raise myself up again. I can restart things, but I I will not continue on this place because it was infertile. It was impossible, my friend, to create anything. So I say goodbye and say to you all, one day I will come back and you all will, uh, you will uh, watch him. Kind of like the Terminator saying he would come back. Yeah, come back stronger that nobody will be able to, they will, they will be forced, I'm sorry, to look at me because I will have things to say and they need to listen because that industry is a passion of my life. It's, it's part of my life. It changed my life and I want to use the same industry to change other people's lives, help other artists. It's not only me who felt that way. That's a lot of artists out there feeling trapped. They don't know what to do. And what, what is your vision for the cultural industry of what it could be and how it could help people in a different way that it's definitely not helping right now? Not helping right now? Because I think art in general um, also brings perspective to things, but the, the biggest pers perspective of all is tell people that they life it's great and they have hope to succeed in life in doesn't matter in what way you put that message out at the end of the day it's all about you are great you will gonna make it doesn't matter if you are working in the field you will gonna make it you know um today our mainstream culture, of course they talk about that. That's great artists doing that. But they only represent a part of Brazil right now. You know, um, it's very polarized even artistically. In Brazil, it's a spectrum of way of living, you know. And I think it's not democratic. It's not a democratic industry. Not at all. It became actually very dictator, dicta dictatorial, you know? I'm gonna say something here, and I actually doesn't care. It became a point that if you do not put a wig on your head, you will, you will not gonna make it, my friend. And I will, like, I don't look good with wigs. I will not put a high heels to be a male artist in the progressive scene, you know? I will not, like, I, I, I love to dress up, I love fashion, I love all of that, but um, when things are just about ourselves and that shows in everything that you see, that's not to me because I want to resonate people deeply. Not only I just look like me, look for me. I want you to look like me. And suddenly you look at the culture, everyone is equal. Everyone looks the same. Every music look, um, if you go to that top 50 from Brazil, it's look, one day the CEO of Spotify say that make playlist was like a love letter. And I was, I was listening to a interview and she say, and he said, uh, make playlist is like writing a love letter. And today I was thinking about that. And I say, what letter is that that people are doing Brazilian playlists, the major ones? Because I don't want to read that letter. It's not love. <laughs> I'm, I just need, it's not love. I, I'm sorry. I need to be honest because I can't do anything else than to be honest at this point in my life. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I offended anyone. I hope don't. I don't. It's all love. When it comes to Waldorf, I want to people understand, and I'm with my eyes closed, but you cannot see. It's all about love. 
Yeah, I totally resonate with that, man. I never go to the top 50 in Brazil or anywhere, actually. Like, I prefer the Which old. Which is sad. Things. Actually, as, um, the top, the um, Latin, Latin, uh, the music in Latin America is doing actually great. That's a lot of incredible artists doing uh, regional music, incredible. America, United States, some shift. Uh, went there i don't know what happened but in the past one year and a half music became very democratic so you if you listen to the top 50 of united states you're gonna find incredible music from all genres from country to hip-hop to pop to even latin it's incredible when it comes to brazil i i know why it's 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 that way i really know why but I will not talk here because it's very inside things mm -hmm. that I need to talk to the CEOs of the corporations. But um, I don't listen. I don't. I don't listen to either. Sometimes I try. Sometimes I really try. It's all the same. Yeah, but you know, I listen. I'm listening to Brazilian music or their playlists. That's a lot of great music. Mm -hmm. They they just doesn't have the investment. They just doesn't have, and they actually have the appeal. It's because, anyways, a lot of things going on in the back scene, in the backstage. Talking about those guys and girls, of course, the people that already are good artists that they could, if they had the chance, like they could have a great audience. And since we like to work in social media and being entrepreneurial about this, like, what do you think? How could social media help those artists so that they could build a platform and find an audience for their music? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint to anyone who are listening. I think internet is great. Give us all a platform and a chance. It definitely give, give us a chance. But there is an industry above all of that. So you can grow and that's a, that's there's a few people that they really um, made it by themselves. But at some point, your art will go to somebody's table to analyze if they want to make your platform bigger than already is. And it's a, on that place of the industry that the change it needs to be done because that is incredible artists on internet right now because internet make it possible for them to put art out, promote their art. But um, the industry, at the end of the day, the industry is still exists to pick and to choose. And I would be very unrealistic if I said here that it's not like that because it is on music, when it comes to book as well, I noticed that trying to have published companies for my book and to other books, they pick what they want the culture to have access, you know? And artists needs to understand that there is a game and it's okay. We just need to play, but um, it's like a, how, I, I don't know how to speak xadrez in yes. English. Chest, right? Sometimes you, you as an artist also needs to know how to uh, give the ultimate checkmate. You know? Yeah, man. That's very interesting to think about that they pick what they want the public to see and to think. Look, in a way. I don't think that's wrong because it needs to be leadership needs to happen in every place leaders they need to pick and to invest in what they think and in what they study their lives and about the data that they see uh, what product and what artists will be greater for culture and they give chances for those artists who are really great and i don't think that's that's wrong at all. I don't think that the problem is to pick or to choose. I think 
it it will always gonna be that way. But the problem is who are picking and who are choosing and why. You know, because a leadership when it comes to culture needs really to have a goal where on where they want to take the culture forward because otherwise they're gonna pick and choose because of what only because of money that doesn't make any sense as I, as we said uh, earlier it's possible to do both things at the same time raise a lot of money and at the same time build a better culture in brazil right now we are the, the industry are doing great we are really doing great but the culture are being destroyed because the ones who are in the leadership are picking and choosing and investing wrong. And I say that with from my heart because I know this is not an, not an opinion. I'm giving you a fact. Yeah, I'm thinking now about all of the past artists that we never knew about because they weren't picked. And That's the- why I like when you mention Cazuza. Cazuza, that is Elise Regina, for an example. Those artists, they really fought in the backstage to change things. They fought as hell for people who are in control at that time, for them, for their art and their message to be seen, because they also represented a challenge for the current culture at that time. But today, when artists um, try to um, change those things, they go, they rebel themselves, and they go to fight head to head. And for the for the culture, and for the audience, for the public, I don't think that's the path. You know, we are, as an industry, we also work off camera. We also work offline we are powerful enough to have those discussions private. Um, I tried, I tried for 10 years and the maximum that I do today, it's, it's write a, a post, address a post or send an email to those big people because I will not give up, I will not. I didn't came in this industry just to, like, I will not work on that professionally only anymore because my big, my public career is important for my country. But that that um, entertainment industry as a whole will still be a, bu- a business that I will put my money and my mouth on. So I will not give up of uh, doing things for better because I, I, I'm in a group chat with people from my hometown. A lot of people, all types of people. They only listen to certain Asian music, only certain Asian music. And certain Asian music at this time is only about some kind of way, alcohol. Man, those people on the group chat who listen to certain Asian all day, they drink all they they drink every freaking day and that it's a problem to me you know they, because they are programmed they are completely programmed knowing that programming is a thing in mm-hmm. life the programming needs to be for people to get smarter not dumber I don't know if the Dunbar word exists, but if it doesn't it exist, doesn't. okay. So that's what I'm working on. And I know what the industry does. They, they took all of our money, people who speak up, they took all of our money, they took all of our powers for us to bend the knee. But I will look great with zero penny on my pocket. Mm-hmm. One way or another, I will still look find a way to look great to fight. I will always be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad that we have our anti-hero man because yes. 
because you know this phenomenon in culture here like the agronegio phenomenon that the agricultural man, industry is putting is so, so much money man i worked with i have the honor to work close to zezé de camargo he is like Wait, it or honest. not he is a legend and not only in the art that he made in the past I mean, even cardi b posts i stories listen to zezé de camargo can you believe that um, and um, that man is a legend when he enters any room, even in his private life, he is a legend. And he made a certain angel that, that it was a, he was a bridge from the traditional certain angel to, the, um, to be more appealing to the younger generation on, uh, at, at 90, uh, on the 90s, he was, he was a, a very pretty boy. He was a huge voice. And cert, the problem, I, I talk to my friends uh, who hate certain Asian music. I say, the problem is not certain Asian music. It's a great gen, gen, genre. genre. I'm sorry, I don't know how to, how to mention music genre, but it's a great music. And it's the music that I also growing up listened to in small towns. But now, and I also worked with the people who are made, who made certain Asia terrible. I worked with, with those people for such a long time. And they have all the power. From one side, it's them. From the other side, it's the organized crime of of the favelas that put all their monies into young artists to promote what they think is best for the coach because those people my friend they know the, the future that they want for the country they really does they really does the future that they want for the country but the leaders who are supposed to be above them doesn't have a clue wow yeah, I'm noting these things down, man, because they're so interesting. Yeah, I love it's 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 became a game to me, and it's a game that I love to play because I really love doing business in this in this. In wow. wow. But going back to Zezé de Camargo, and you talked about how he's a legend, and in any room that he goes into, do you think that those kinds of people, like the, those really great artists? When you are with them in a room or you see them close by, do they have like this aura to them? Like you can Fair. kind of feel them like that they Super. are there? Super. Zezé I, I met um, the greatest the, the greatest and the biggest ones, like from Xuxa to Yvette Sangalo to all, all of them. Zezé is one of those who will all, always, every time that you listen to his voice, will make something inside of you feel differently. It's, it's very bizarre because I, I think he, his family actually, right, really meant something bigger to Brazil as a whole. It was a history of his family, how they made it to success. He also went through a road, his family, uh, it's something that the culture doesn't give value anymore. The industry doesn't give value to that anymore. It's super sad. But that we have those people on our industry yet. But they doesn't have a lot of chances anymore. Which I think it's sad because I don't don't even think that it's smart because the entire entire world are consuming a lot of catalogs. Um, for an example, I was mentioned Legion Urbana. They are legends. They are really legends. They have so much listen to, listeners. And they just need to have more platform, you know? And they don't because the project is completely, it's other project that they want for the culture. So if you listened a song from Desert Camargo, 
if you listen to a song from Legion Urbana, even being different type of music, they will make you think, you know? Mm -hmm. And for some people, made people think it's not a good idea. Yeah, the less they think, the better, right? Exactly, exactly. Just act. Yeah, Just don't think act. too much. Be a robot. Don't think too much. Exactly. Grab your beer, go to a party, shake your ass, and you're good. Yeah, yeah. work 10 hours a day, then go home. Yes, Drink yes. a lot. Go to a party in the weekend and just repeat this yes. for that's, 20, that's 30 Brazil. years. That's Brazil. But that's not. Our yeah, culture man. is beautiful. We have so much. And I think still today, even with all of this, we still have a bunch of great artists. And of course, it's harder to find, but you have the musicians. If you really look for it, you have a lot of great books that have come out recently in Brazil as well. And but. It doesn't get mainstream. It's hard for those things to break out and become the mainstream because of everything you said. Yes, but at the same time, um, if you if you see the entire environment, you see the environment thirsty for things different. So we always have is. I, I wrote about that a lot on X and it's been the most exhausting thing to look for people in the world to bring together, to put all of, of what we are talking into perspective and make they see that we need to invest because if one side is investing in all of that, that is made culture like it is right now, the other side need investment as well. So that is a lot of great books that are published, but maybe doesn't have huge um, um, investment to promote them. And that is a lot of books also that are, are not, not even being translated or not even have the chance to mm -hmm. be published. So we're going to sit and watch until when. You know, I have the power inside of me to change everything that I say that I can change. I know that I can, you know, but it involves other people, involves investment, because I always said that ugliness and dumbness have billions of investment. So how do you how do you fight against that? You also have this have all the same amount to fight head to toe, no, head to head, or you have more, you know? I, I can't think about other other way. You need to fight on the same level. And yeah, mission and just and to, to finish about the, the part of the Zed Camargo that, um, that I mentioned, in the past few years, uh, the people really tried to destroy his career because he had his opinions about culture in general. He's put his opinion out there because he felt. And a lot of companies, huge companies, was really not accepting playing his music or give platform to his music. I listened so much like, oh, we are fighting so much, but they don't want they don't want because mm. he support that, he said that, or, you know, um, in that, when you are working your ass off and putting all of your energy into music and creative, and somebody came to you and talked to you, we are not going to accept that because other thing than the music, it's super, or the art, it's it's. For in a lot of uh, uh, meetings, I wanted to really say a big. You can put a a sound there after, but I really want to say fuck you all. I really wanted, but I didn't, unfortunately. No, but 
Can you imagine if with an absolute legend like him, this things happen? Imagine with the small guy. Yes, completely. Um, but I think things are changing. And while I'm breathing, while I'm breathing, I will. My career will happen. My work in the business will happen. You know, it can take any time. I'm not going anywhere. I will live until, at least until my hundred years, baby. Fuck yeah, man. God bless you. And you know what? If we could go back a little bit, you told us that when you were working for Billboard, like they asked, like, how did he get that info? Because you were able to get some things, some oops, some, yeah, that people wouldn't get. And how, like, what did you have a method? Did you have some secret to getting? That kind of thing. I always was an investigator. I love to dive into information. So in every industry, you have the, the rumors and you, you take the rumors and you investigate the rumors and you're going to find some place that you need to know if it makes sense for that thing to happen. And I actually put out two things that was exclusively. There was the Michael Jackson hologram that I was at that time in a lot of forums um, and they had a lot of insiders. And I, I had one insider that told me that was gonna happen and I choose to believe him. And I say, I will publish and I publish and also Another one was like a, a, a Katy, Katy, Katy Perry was to release. She was like on her prime, on each other, another hit. And everyone was saying, oh, what is going to be her next song, right? What's going to be her next release? And I love pop culture to investigate, even strategically, why an artist will release something, put everything in context, listen as in a businessman on the industry, if that record, it's gonna work. If it's not, it's, it's not gonna work. And I had this insider telling me that she would release a song called, uh, uh, that time was Birthday. And nobody had yet had to publish that information. The world what was expecting for her to announce her next music. And I was the first to publish that her next release will gonna be that song. And I pray so hard for it to be, because if it wasn't, I would lose all my credibility. And she released that song as, a, as her single at that time. But you just, you just need to investigate and we have that, you know, that gut feeling that tell us that we need to do. And were there sometimes that you had that good feeling, but you weren't sure, and, and at the end it didn't come out to be true, or? Yeah, that uh, it has it have one, but until this day, I don't I don't know if I was wrong because sometimes you're right, but the industry changes. But you announce something about an artist, and the artist can go and change the release, for an mm -hmm. example, you know. Uh, that happened as well. Uh, one time I anno announced a release of Lord, uh, a song that, and I say officially she will release that song and she didn't. But it was like pretty obvious that uh, it, she was released. It was like the a huge hit. But I think Royals was such a huge song that they didn't want to release any more songs on that record. Mm -hmm. But it happens as well. Yeah, man, I can imagine that you might, you must have like a thousand stories with all of these artists. And it's so cool. I don't even know what to ask about this anymore because I have so many ideas of artists that you might know. Yeah. So did you go to, well, of course you worked with Vanessa, but before maybe, and you know, those international festivals with a bunch of artists from all over the world. I went to Lollapalooza like, 
when when I working on Billboard, I went to work on Lollapalooza to cover the shows. I didn't uh, interview. I actually I always mention that I interview Rick Astley because to me I don't care. He's a legend. The the, the guy who sings Never Gonna Give You Up. Mm-hmm. You know, and I interview him on Billboard through telephone. My English was terrible. And he was so patient uh, to listen to me. Uh, and I, I don't even remember if my questions uh, was good enough, if I, if I was a good reporter. But it was, to me, it was a big deal to interview him. Work on Lollapalooza was great. But there was someone that I, I met working with Vanessa. We we was we were to Brasilia, um, help UN to do some work, bringing awareness to HIV and etc. And we went to work on a hospital there with kids who who were victim of HIV. And I met man, the mother of Renato Russo from Legião Urbana. Oh, For me, man. that was such a big deal. A huge deal because he's a mother of one of the biggest legends of Absolute history legend. of rock and roll actually and I, I I even asked for a picture I really took a picture with Renato's mother that was a big deal to me it was incredible oh. her her yeah, aura yeah. as well you know oh, iconic I can imagine how you felt man yeah I'm also a big very big Legion Urbana fan and I'm super was fan. my favorite band for such a long time yeah I listened so much to I'm super yeah, fan of Legion oh it's well one of the best if not the best Brazilian bands ever so I also have sometimes I think that I blew up a lot of opportunities when I was because I came to the industry very young with 23 years old and I didn't have any background I was a waiter for God's sake. And in one year from a waiter, I was working on Billboard. And I was kind of... Um... Anyway, sometimes I look at my emails and I actually feel proud of myself that I, I had a, a certain inside of me that I knew what I was talking about. And I remember that one day I sent an email Working on Billboard, I know that's not... I don't recommend you to do that when you're working on a company and uh, you try to, you know, talk to other people. But at that time, I was 23 years old and I reached out to a huge manager from a huge worldwide artist because I was looking to her career. I, I, I'm always looking for solving problems on other people's career. I love it to help other people's career, uh, especially women in music industry. And I was seeing that huge artist on an international level, okay? Um, I noticed that something was not working out for some reason. And I reached out to her managers and say, what is happening? Uh, I think you, you, you can do this, that and all of that to make this record bigger. Like, let's do this record bigger, for God's sake. I was so, I love music so much that I was basically say to him, let's make this record the biggest record of the world right now. For some reason, I don't know if the artist, she was going through a lot at that time because of media, people talking shit. And I, I felt so happy because he actually reply me um he was i felt oh my god he, he read my mail and he said that they already have tried everything that i that i said but it was going on other things in the backstage that it was not possible but you know those those little things completely give us fuel to continue to pursue what we think and what if you 
that is our path, you know? I love it. I'm sorry, I'm super nostalgic yeah. with um, entertainment industry today, man. I woke up feeling like this. Man, don't be sorry at all. I think this is exactly the type of thing that we want to talk about. You know, the things that make us nostalgic, that make us go back to those times. You know, one of the questions that I usually ask, but you may want to answer it again, but you kind of just answered it, is like, what would you tell your 18-year-old self? And it's about thinking about those times and like things maybe I would do differently, maybe I wouldn't because I wouldn't be who I am today if I did things differently. So I, I love when people are so open, man. So thank you for this, actually. No, I thank you for having me the opportunity to talk about this because I'm not inside the industry um, at the moment because I choose not to. It w I really choose. Um, that there, what we are talking here, I wish I, I was working on every single day of my life to change. So I, I do not talk about this with anyone because here in Brazil, I'm not seeing anyone to help me with that. But what, what I will say to my 18 years old is stop in drinking, stop trying to look cool and pe please, uh, pe uh, pleasing people to accept and like you and just go with everything that you have in the things that you love because you really have the talent. So don't waste your time because everything that I'm doing today, I already knew that I had to do on my 18 years old. But I, I choose at that time because of I, it was like on my 17, I tried suicide. I was in a very dark place on my 17, 18 years old, I was very dark. So when I went to Belo Horizonte, I was doing everything that I could to feel, to try to feel happy again with life. On that time, it was really living like a rock star, drinking, looking cool, because I, I like to dress, I all of that. But on that time, I wanted to feel like pleasure, for life again mm -hmm. and I put my dreams on hold to feel life again come back to me um, but I think things working on the time that they need to work and I learned so much yeah. even from the, my mistakes yeah that was exactly what I was thinking of because you learned so much and and that phase that you were promoting events with bars and clubs, you were also getting into that industry in, in a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when you were in your 18, 20 years old and you were working at, at with bars and clubs and promoting events. Yeah, I think the things that you went through and the things that you were working with with promoting events, with working with the bars and the, the clubs and everything when you were younger. I think they might have given you some tools and some abilities that you yes. ended up using in the future. So it's easy for us sometimes to look at the past and just think of the bad things, but at the same time, they kind of make us what we are today. So I guess I, I'm glad that you're good now. I completely agree what you are saying. And although, you know, I can't say that I would do things differently because on that time, it was impossible for me to have the information and the knowledge that I have today. It was completely other time, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I did, I always did the best with the tools that I had at that time. Mm -hmm. um, um, and in the past two years, I am actually Today I'm I, I'm feel I'm feeling very. Um, how can I say? I really trust in the things that I'm saying, but through the the last five years in the entertainment industry, I lost a lot 
of the strength that I had prior um, when I came to the industry uh, with so much desire to help and to change because I had to adapt so much that I really lost a part of me um, that I I found in the in the last year I guess um, and every day I woke up and I feel so ready for my public career ready to have conversations with the lead, the real leaders that I need to have um, that can really help change things in Brazil because of course I want to change the world but the world actually are looking quite great when it comes to at least the West when it comes to things that are being promoted um, in entertainment and in music of course there's a lot of things who needs to fix but um, at least they have a top 50 that they can listen to <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so I have so much passion inside of me, make people listen to great messages again, and they can bring everything that they want. I can explain in every way. I can explain a poetic way, in a business way, on, with data, with everything. I can prove how things need to be working on, and... I'm here for it, you know? We are here for it. So I hope God is taking this message to where he needs to arrive. Because this morning I real I gave I sent a message. And this time I hope I get an answer. I hope so as well, man. And yeah, wow. I think that it's good that you took a step back and that were you were able to recover and to rest recharge and so yes. that when you go back you will come back so much stronger yeah because as someone with so much energy and so much creative potential i know it's hard sometimes right you want to be doing things all the time and sometimes it's good to take a step back and to just let things like kind of settle and then you um, come back stronger I'm talking to a lot of guides, business guides, and they are helping me a lot. And I think I, I talk a lot about war, you know, but it's not because I want to make war. It's, you just need to understand war to know how things work. So, for an example, Sun Tzu have that incredible book, The Art of War, that he said, in another words, of course, I will mention that sometimes you need to, um, how can I say, basically avoid the battle when you know that you can mm -hmm. win, right? And that's unconsciously that what I did because in Brazil right now, it needs to have a team. It needs to have more than, ju than junior elders. It needs to have people that I, I was not able to find in 10 years in, on the field, he needs to have th those people. So I'm still looking after those people to, to help me to fight this war. But it's just a cultural war. Like it's not, nothing, it's not a big deal, you know? It's just a, come on, it's not too much. And sometimes I think people in a lot of industry, people are too much coward. People, are, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm such a man, you know, because I doesn't have a, when it comes to entertainment, I have a lot of fears um, in business, but in entertainment, I have no fear because at this time, people who are working on, oh my God, it's sad because they do nothing what they are they what they are doing they know nothing you know so i'm i'm looking out to find those people and if it ha if it happens my friend it will be beautiful view view <laughs> because we have so much opportunities here so much great artists and Oh my God, I'm, you know how, how excited I feel when I'm talking about this? 
because I look to the world that's a lot of incredible people in the entertainment in the world. Great, great, great corporations. And sometimes I imagine they look, they look in Brazil, talk to people in Brazil in the entertainment. I can imagine, or I can, how they feel because it's a huge market that for you to succeed on a global scale, you need Brazil. It's a lot of people. That's a lot of international artists that needs the market in Brazil. But sometimes I think they choose not to work with people here because or the, the sound is bad or people are not trustful or people doesn't have a vision, you know? So I'm besides wanting to change things here, I want that the market be more open to people from outside to come build here, you know? Yeah, man, I think we need an army of Waldorfs with more badass people who are not afraid of saying and doing the things that need to be done and said. Oh, I can't, like, to me, I'm doing hora extra on waiting. Oh man, oh my God. I have so much ener energy to put out to work, to work that I think I can build up a, a pyramid by myself. Oh my God, I have a lot of energy and I, I never play mono, Monopoly, that game, but if we had an emperor in the world and came to Waldorf and say, Waldorf, now you're gonna have on your hands. I'm gonna say names because I'm just dreaming. You have Spotify, you have YouTube, and you have UMG, you have Sony, and you have Warner. You're gonna have to work to all of them and change all of that, all of yourself. You do it, I will say, I'll do it, deal. On that level of desire to work, Oh my God. Yeah, That's let's how... make you the CEO of all of that. I was thinking about that. I imagine if somebody put me on a CEO of a huge corporation like that. Um, to be really honest, I would prefer to work in the, when I say the backstage, at least in the beginning, to work on a private way, you know? Because when you put your face and your name on, on the front, of a, of a seat like that, that is a lot of things that you can't talk. Mm -hmm. And I have so much energy, energy right now that I prefer to sit with CEOs that I know that I can, can explicitly talk about all the problems and say to them, let's fix together, than to be the actual CEO, at least because I need to be the CEO of my own career, of my own company at least for now. Yeah, got it, got it, yeah. Yeah, being a CEO, being that kind of leader, you need to be- Polite. Forward facing, and, and it's easy to, like people want to attack you for anything that you might say or do, so. Yeah, one thing is to be the owner, for an example, X. When I think about Elon Musk, he actually inspired me so much to be a businessman that doesn't have, does, doesn't, are afraid to think or to talk. But for an example, he had a CEO, Linda Yacarino. Linda is super polite. She go to a hearing, she went to a hearing in the, in the Congress, in American Congress. If the CEO was me, I would have lose my mind and say, mm -hmm. fuck you all. But she was super polite, you know? Company needs CEOs like that. If it was Elon Musk on that place, you know, I, that's why I also admire Mark Zuckerberg. I also work with his company a lot here in Brazil. Uh, he went to that conference in the Congress and he was so humiliated and he listened. He listened it all. And I, that's why he's, working his ass off, looking beautiful, looking great to put energy out because man, he is, people really bully him publicly for God's sake. 
It's wild out there. It's a jungle, baby. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> oh, you're gonna die, but I know I will not. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for at least another 100 years, so you yes, can have time okay. to do everything. Yes, oh my god. That's a lot of billions to to gain until there. Oh yeah, and invest in Brazilian tourism and architecture. Please, for God's sake, it's so much work to do. My friend, it's so work to do, and I'm here in my room. Can you imagine that? I'm here planning. That's what I, I actually wrote about this. I, sometimes I feel, uh, imagine Napoleon in exile. He planned so much. In exile here, I suffered, but I planned for the rest of my life. But I, it's time for me to, to dress every day, to look good, because I also like to put my clothes on and to go to work and to build things man you know i love that and i want to and i will um so I, no please pray for me put me in our prayers on your prayers you everything who are listening to this podcast pray for wilder because i need those leaders to listen to me to come to me because they all have man the entire world have my contacts at this moment I I went like I really went to I tried to reach out to the biggest people on the planet that I admire that change things to help me change and I think it's time it is I'm sorry Gabriel I speak too much today no man you're the guest you're supposed to Spill it out, spill all the beans and, you know, make some people uncomfortable if they hear this. That's our goal. That's our objective here to give awesome people like you a stage so that you can say everything you want and everything that's in your heart. And dude, I really love the Napoleon in exile example that you gave. I think he had an, the opportunity to do the things that he tried to, he probably I don't know if he planned, but I'm pretty sure. Because if I'm planned, imagine Napoleon. I'm planned to conquer Brazil. And I don't care if somebody are listening to this and think that I'm an imperialist or a monopolist. At this time, I am both. Fuck it. I don't care. And what do you see like about vis visualizing your goal and how you're going to conquer it? Do you think about these things all the time? Are you constantly all visualizing the time. them? Visualizing them all the time. Visualizing them visualizing them, working on them. I think about them all the time. I'm dreaming about them on the shower. I'm thinking about them. I'm, I'm uh, writing the dreams. I'm writing the projects. I'm reaching out to people. I really doing it all. The only thing that I was lacking to do, it was working on my, on myself, working on my confidence to know, I'm sorry. Nobody's bringing that to the table. If somebody have any better idea, please bring because better idea is always always welcome. But until somebody came to a better idea and fix the problem that it needs to be solved, I, I still gonna talk about it. I still gonna reach out to people and I still gonna, you know, make noise until I get what I want. I love that obsession, that fire yes, behind it, it all. It's a healthier obsession because it's not because I want to change because I, I want the wild earth needs because entertainment is full of narcissists. It's not, come a, it's not from a place of narcissism. It's from a place to see my culture, you know? Yeah, we talked about people being nihilists nowadays. And I think a great reason is because they don't have this reason this vision something that really propels them to make something different to have all of that energy to channel all of this into making like we said a work of art or making it can be anything really it can be your job it can be raising a family but having some kind of purpose and i think most people live purposeless today people uh 
purpose is is something that people really need to start to talk more about because it's a lot of lack of uh, lack of purpose any conversation needs to have a purpose you know because otherwise what you were talking for what you are working for what you are randomly running you know like um i i i was a confused person sometimes i'm still in because inside my mind it's so much going on and so much things to fix so much things to help and and i didn't mention anything about my personal life you know i have a family i have a lot of things to to build on a personal level as well which is way no way more important but as important as the things that i need to be work public, publicly and for the community but um i never lack purpose that i can i can say for sure i never and that puts ahead of that puts you ahead of 99% of people because most people they don't have any purpose like that they think about it that 1% that you mention it's strange because um i always feel that i need to get better in so much things if you see my my room right now what i'm i i'm sleeping here it's a room that i built to be my sacred place inside my my house that i read it came to a point that everything in my that i do in my daily base became sacred so i spend the whole day here i pray here i work here i sleep here i visualize i do everything here that's book everywhere that's book on the ground that's everywhere because that's a lot of growth to do as well and i i always feel that i'm not good enough but i'm working on that to not sabotage myself but uh when it comes to brazil i really know that i have everything to be one of the most successful people here in a lot of aspects even financially i will not accept any more to be left behind financially because other people are like not even monopolize a, a culture they are they are just robbing all the money come on you know you better hum this people are not they are not ready for me man they are not ready for me they are not they will not see me coming yeah you're the greatest nemesis to them it will be fun all cultures and all histories needs to be in antagonists so let's do it i i just want work i just need to um see things changing i just need to see to put my hands on the work you know my book, my finally my book is will got finished this week and i will have the entire day at least until i start to write the second part to focus on business because the book t- took a lot of energy out of me but um when more i talk about it more i want to act but i need my army i need the army the freaking army dude let's start building this army then yes come on what's coming up next then after the book you're finishing the book and then is it building the army or is it something else well i will working um on the both the both aspect of things at the same time because i'm working on build the um, support system for me to be able to work on all of those things. In one front is my book and is my public career that I'm working on finding investors. I have the business plan, I have the presentation of the author and I have the product. So I'm going to the field to reach out to build a team on this perspective. And the other front is the entertainment industry that it needs to be changed and it needs my help so it also needs 
this this army is out there. They are already working on an, on a worldwide level. They just need to see me. They just freaking need to listen to me because they know I already exist, man. They know that I exist. I know that for sure. And so I just need to think how grab their attention on a way that they pay attention because I already tried, but I'm going to have to be creative. Maybe through this podcast, it will be a, an amazing because this, what we are doing here, we are doing a service to the entertainment community who are listening to us. And I hope they listen because what we are doing here, it's a service for the community. It is. It's the best feedback that they could get. Exactly. And I hope they all listen. I work my ass off on this English. I, I, I went, I jumped to so much spaces in the past year. It was so, so helpful to work on my English and I can talk to anyone. Bring it on. Come on. Where the biggest, I want to talk to the biggest <laughs> of the world. Where did this, where these leaders, where the hell are the, where, where's the cave? Where the, where's the cave that they are hiding from Waldorf? They are afraid of Waldorf. Don't be afraid of Waldorf. Waldorf is not mad. Okay. Waldorf. We're going to make Brazil great again. So don't be afraid of Waldorf. Where are the big boys? We want to see, uh, we want yeah. you to hear Waldorf. Join the party. We can have fun and we can yeah. have fun and make business and do it all for God's sake. It's possible. Yeah, maybe we should actually do a party and see if someone shows up. I'm invited. I will not invite you. I will not invite Fabio anymore. I already invited you guys for us to meet. And I'm not drinking a lot, but we can have a glass of wine, listen to music, have conversations. I'm always here for everyone who wants to change things. If you want to change things, we will meet. Awesome, man. Awesome. And yeah. would you like to plug anything, any of your work, your book, anything you would like to tell people about? Actually, I talk so much about um, entertainment industry that I, I spend a few times talking about my writing that I, I'm still proud of the things that I write, not on my book. Um, I wrote a lot of things on X. It's on my bio on my link tree, it's a lot of long form texts about the most different things. And if people like to write, I invite them to read. I have this, it's a, the link tree is divided in a lot of series. So now I'm writing a series, series that it's called um, Love Letters that I'm writing like it was letters from me to whoever, but we have the series who I named um, the journal of an inspired poet that I talk about censorship in Brazil in a poetic way that I talked about the problems of the culture, sometimes in a fun way. Um, I get a lot of jokes. Um, and it's just, I really, I really proud of all of those writings. Sometimes in the future, maybe I'm going to have to took them out. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> for now, they are all there. So I invited everyone to read them and follow me because my invasive thoughts, I, I, I like them and I'm needing engagement. So please engage y'all so so guys everyone you you need to follow at junior waldorf and you need to read everything because we don't know if it will be there so if you're watching this six months from now we don't know if it will still be there yes because waldorf by then will have exploded and destroyed yes. everything that's bad in yes. Brazilian culture yes i'm gonna have to hey. be more polite or maybe not or maybe i'm just uh -huh. gonna succeed being who I am. Yeah, so good that they can't touch you, man. Yeah, I really hope. So my brother, 
usually the last question I ask people is what is their definition of success? My definition of success is provide for my family, is see hope in the eyes of my family, and is do the things that I love, be recognized for the things that I do in the world, and also to have an impact. I will not say that it's not a success, that I do not see, see that as a success because I, I, I do. I think it's important for everyone to be um, relevant in the culture that they, that they yeah. be successful, desire success. It's okay. It's not a problem. Dude, that was great. Thank you so much for coming. Everyone, go follow Junior. Thank you, man.